Hello everybody, we Paddy from across the shop and uh, eye candy. I'm not going to be showing a particular knife. This is a roundup of my 2020 as a year and a bit of a chat. And uh, look, I've got a mug of tea. I've got my little puffer. I'm in the mood for a chat with you boys. So pause the video, get a cup of tea. It'll pass a half an hour or so. But I just wanted to go over... What 2020 was for me, look, as far as knife goes, I've had a stack. I've had a stack of knives. And if we're knife people, most of us do have a stack of knives. Maybe not as much as me because I review them as well. But I am a knife lover and a knife collector of sorts. So what about 2020? Well, first of all, I think I would love to just... For those people who have lost somebody this year, whether it be COVID or, or anything like that, and some of the old knife makers we've lost, like Tony Bowes, and I know there's been more, and I'm not going to go through all the names, but I would just like to say that you've been in my prayers, and I do pray for those that are losing people on a daily basis around the world. It's been a horrendous year for everybody, um, with lockdowns, with you know job losses. I've been very, very fortunate, and I know that, and I give thanks to that, uh, that, that I've been able to continue on and buy knives, which are a complete luxury when you think of what other people are going through. So, with that out of the way, how's 2020 been as far as knives go? Well, 2020 has been for me a revelation. Not that there's been any, uh, well, I've had some extremely amazing knives come through my table uh, that I now own, that I never thought I would. One of them was uh, at the end of last year, I got this, the Medford. And this is in a giveaway starting on the 18th of December. If you haven't seen the, the previous video on it, this has been given away on the channel. And this has not been given away by me. I've done a trade with a young man called Jason Gilfoyle on Instagram. Please go and follow him. I'll put it down below in the description, the full uh, Instagram title. He traded me a knife and then he said, Paddy, give that Medford away, you know, as a giveaway. So humbling as that was, uh, I couldn't just do a giveaway. So I haven't talked to Jason. His father passed away recently um, and he wanted, I wanted to give something to charity rather than just give away a knife that's worth £550. Um, so between him and me, we're going to be giving this away. It's going to cost £5 a ticket and all the money will go to Jason. I'll send the knife to whoever wins. The money will go to Jason and it'll be going into a, a cancer charity uh, and for on behalf of his late father. So the 18th of December, the video would be gone up to enter in for this knife. And what I also wanted to do was give one of my knives in so that we've got two prizes. And what I decided to do was another knife that uh, I got for review this year from my channel is this GEC number 62 Easy Congress. Now, it is lightly used because I have used it a wee bit. There it is. It is a beautiful knife. This has a little chuff on it. And that's a little bird that's engraved in here. This one's from Mike's Knives in the UK who kindly gave me this to review on the channel. So in respect to Mike uh, and what he does for us over here in the UK, he's the only GEC dealer. Again, I'll put his details down below and he, he kindly gave this to the channel. So amazing person, one of the, you know, a nice fella, give the knife. So I'm going to give that away along with the Medford. So you have two prizes. It'll come in the tube, everything that it comes with. It'll come to you. Same as the Medford comes with everything. So that's the giveaway talking about. So... Knives, what have I been interested in? What have I, what's changed for me? Well, you all know, I have gone completely and utterly <sighs> slip joint mad, but I've also gone GEC. That's my main collection. Now, I collect all sorts of other knives. Um, from the, the Italian maker slip joint, um, American uh well, he's a designer, but he gets it made in China, I believe. This is the, the Wayfair. Um, 
all sorts of completely different poker, old Brit, old antique knives. This is a Wollstone home. I've gone right through the whole. This is a, an old USA made, uh, Cataran, Catarandus, Catarargus. I never get that name right. My brother knives, um, Rough Rider, but my main collection has been GEC. And I joined this crew not so long ago, but it has changed my my whole outlook on the the knife community as far as slip joints are concerned. There are an amazing uh, bunch of fellas that are in this group. It's the Slip Joints Collectors Club UK. And we share knives between it. Basically, that's what it is because it's a not for profit it's a not for profit buy and selling group, to be honest with you. He said, if you want to make a profit, it's not the group to come to. And I just love the sincerity of the people in it. They want to share what they've got with other people and they don't take the hand. And everybody keeps at a very minimum price. And, and that's lovely. That really is going against the grain for everything else where people, an awful lot of people want to flip knives and make money. As a collector, that's a nightmare scenario to get into. A nightmare. Um, so I'm enjoying that side, the, the slip joint side, and maybe go back into it. But I love my budget ones. I've done a budget video yesterday on this. This is amazing. Now, it's just a budget knife. It's a liner lock. Uh, it's a two hand opening budget knife with my Carta review yesterday, well, a couple of days ago, probably before you see this video. But I've really got into just back into getting the odd few budget. I don't buy as many as I used to. And that really did change this, this last year. I haven't bought as many budget, but I'm not going to apologise for that. For four years nearly, I bought budget knives with every spare penny I had. I was sending off the AliExpress, sending off here. And they're still out there. But I'm sort of now being more picky on the ones that I buy. Um, and then I, I, I'm buying half decent budget knives that I can pass on sale, try to get some of the money back. And then invest that back in again, which I've done more of this year than I've ever done. I've sold some knives, so and I just the money goes straight back into the channel, straight back in. It doesn't go on my ask my wife. It doesn't go in my pocket. Um, everything that I earn on AdSense goes straight back into the channel plus more. And and I I I love the fact I can do that. Once again, I'm very fortunate that I can do that. And that's not a boastful way. It's just something I'm enjoying doing. But I've, again, I've had other things this year I never thought I have. I have another £600 knife in my collection. I didn't pay for this. This was kindly sent to me from Polish Custom Knives. Um, from a knife maker over there called Herman Knives. Who makes an amazing knife. Never have I had a knife that has got the action of this knife. It is just amazing. So I'd like to thank them and other companies, Heine Haynes, who helped supply me with knives. They were amazing this year. It all went haywire as usual. Other people got into it and mucked it all up for us. But hopefully sometime in the future, um, our group and Heine can get back into some discounts for you. Um, uh, look, my collection is so varied that uh, here's a, look, another modern slip joint. Zach sent me this. This is a Savivi um, slip joint. Uh, not a slip joint, it's a lockback. But it's in that sort of modern traditional. I'm loving these knives. I really am loving the modern traditional. It really does it. This is a modern traditional. This is probably the best modern traditional Unlocking knife that I've got. Listen to that. That's the Gitano from Lion's Deal. And there's a company that's really bucking the trend. Whereas everywhere else, China, China is taking over the market. Everybody wants Chinese knives. And we're now paying USA prices and more for Chinese knives. That, to me, that's a bit crazy, but I'm not going to get controversial in this as much as I can. But that's crazy. We are now paying you know, as much, if not more, for Chinese knives than um, the rest of the world type knives, USA being one of the other biggest producers. And these boys over in Italy, there's Lion's Deal, there's Viper, uh, there's a couple of other ones. 
that are making knives that are of a superior quality than most other, you know, just standard knives, but they're keeping their prices real. And, you know, they're selling them over here in our, in our uh, shops over here and in Europe especially, they're in obviously because they're Italian. But Mike Latham over at Collector Knives is a big producer. He gets runs made for him from these companies and then charges us a reasonable price for knives. So as far as American knife makers, Mike Latham has really stood out this year as being somebody who wants to keep the quality up but keep the prices down. And he's not continuing. No, he does. I'm sure he does have Chinese knives in his knives, but the, everybody nearly does now. But he has given us options. So if you don't want to go that route, here's another route you can go to. I just wish British makers would get in tow and make knives of a better quality. I have some, I have one um, custom knife. This was a Michael Bay, one of the Sheffield makers. There's another boy, Lee White, and uh, Arthur Wright are now starting to up their game. I am hoping next year, that's where I'm going to go. I want to buy more British knives. I'm still going to buy the Italian ones because they're fantastic. I want the British traditional boys. Hopefully they're going to keep continuing to up their game. And they have. And they have. Fair play to them. Lee White is somebody that's really hit my radar. But um, Slick Slice is one of my friends in Scotland. He's been getting Arthur Wright and uh, and other British companies' knives. He's been uh, a tailor's eyewitness. They're up in their game. And I want it to continue because they're not quite... At this standard yet and I know this is a modern but another company Boker who are making traditional knives their quality control is better and that's the thing that keeps yeah look like, what keeps me coming back if I get a knife that's great quality control and then you buy another knife from that brand that's good and can take that's why you stick with a brand and for me the best in the world at the minute is GEC they just make a knife that it is superior to all others out there at this price range they keep it at a price range that is absolutely fair now they're a small company so they can't make the 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 batches the size of batches that everybody would want but they don't put the prices up their prices are very fair when they're sold now this is the bad thing the secondary market again you always get somebody who wants to buy something and then rip you off don't pay the prices. Go without. That's my, that's my thing. Go without. Just do not pay. Have a look around. Shop around. There's other companies out there that are doing well. If you can buy GECs from GEC or from just, you know, somebody maybe puts $10 or $15. It's, he's, he's, it takes patience and time to get a GEC knife when they first come out. So if that person wants to make 20 bucks or 30 bucks. I don't mind at all, and I have and, and happily will pay that to get the new model. But that's about it. No more than that. I refuse to pay the up. The inflated prices are going about now are nonsense. And I suppose that's the same with a lot of knives um, that can be flipped. People always want to abuse it. Um, other knives I've got this year. I've got my first Chris Reeves this year. This is the Wii in Cosi, the small in Cosi. It's a gem. It's an, I, I probably, I don't know whether I'll ever have another one. I don't feel as if I need another one of these. It's just a titanium knife with a lovely blade. Really well made. Tolerances that everybody knows about. It is a joy to just open it. So that's it. And I'm so glad I have that sort of knife. But titanium, a nice blade, steel M390. It's a Chinese one. It is beautiful. Artisan, designed by an American, but made by the Chinese. Beautiful, beautiful knife. Really pleased to have that. Spyderco, um, I got a Spidey Chef this year. And I, well, I think I've had this year, at least a year. Knives that are just, I know a lot of people want and don't get. Again, I'm very fortunate. Um, tactical knives, I have. The odd tactical knife. Am I ever going to use a tactical knife? Probably not, but it's for the channel. You know, this is one that's just absolutely gorgeous. From Benchmade. I have a hinderer. I have another hinderer coming, which was the trade for the Medford. 
I'm really looking forward to that. It's the XM18. I have the slip joint version um, and I've got the uh, locking version coming, which I'm really looking forward to. So next year, I'm probably not going to buy a lot of high-end um, knives at all. They'll be slip joint high-end if that's what they are. I really want a, a custom slip joint made hopefully by a UK maker. And there's some cracking UK makers of custom slip joints. So next year, my goal is probably to get one of those. I'm not sure what it's going to be or who it's going to be. I'm just going to let that unfold because, you know, I have a drawer, drawer full of GECs this year. I've spent a fortune. <laughs> so I'll probably ease down a wee bit. And you might find there's a few more budget knives come in because I've gone mad this year. But I'd look, this year has been brilliant. Uh, and here's another lesson I learned this year, which is money and buying knives doesn't quell the the love of pocket knives, no matter whether they're locking, slip joint. If you love knives, <laughs> money's nearly secondary. You just find the money to buy them. Um, and as long as you're not harbing, harbing, harming your family uh, and taking bread off the table, I, I, I've just, I've had a ball. And I've met more new people this year, again, who are just the salt of the earth, who are involved in this hobby. So what have I learned this year? I've learned that my tastes are changing. The chase after the higher end knives, uh, you know, it's not gone, it's there, but I'm not in a rush anymore because I would find something hard to beat this. For my lifestyle, there's nothing, you know, this is, and that's why I wanted to let the Medford go because this is my big high end knife. And it's just, is it better than the Medford? It's a different, a completely different knife, but it's one I'll use more than the Medford, which is why the Medford had to go, so that I could get another knife, which is the hinder for the channel. And that's basically it, because I live in the UK and don't get to, to use my bigger knife, although I'm very lucky I've got a caravan I use them down there, but I don't use them on a daily basis. So I've got a great selection, and if I can change these, sell one, buy another one, you know, keeping it modern, that's all I want. But this year, I'm just going to be honest, a lot of it's going to be on slip joints, both expensive and budget, because budget slip joints are every bit as good as, a, you know, as a tool. VG10 bone handles, I dyed this one myself, it came out absolutely stunning. Love this knife. Uh, this is a brother knife, and I've had them for years, so... Antique knives really have hit. I have a drawer full of antique knives that I've picked up this year. Uh, that's going to continue, although I'm slowing down a wee bit. Everything's going to be a bit more slower next year and a bit more at ease and a bit more, you know, some more sharpening videos. I didn't do enough of them this year. I missed doing my sharpening videos. And I know that they're quite, uh, they can be quite long and boring if you're not a sharpening person, but... I enjoy doing them and I enjoy the feedback I get from the couple of people who give me feedback. I've got that new sharpening system, the WorkSharp. That's amazing. I love that. And that's the sort of sharpening system this community needed because there's a lot of people can't sharpen, maybe don't have the time to learn or are not particularly keen in learning. That is just the most basic and it's just, it'll do the job wonderfully. That sharpener costs £50. A set of £20 sticks, ceramic sticks, from Lansky, you know, the Lansky turn box. And you can sharpen any knife on the planet. Any knife. Uh, and that's a big statement, isn't it? So for, for say, £80, 80 pound, you've got a sharpening system that can sharpen any knife. And that's marvellous. Look, stropping is another thing. You know, I want to get back and, you know, talking about sharpening and stropping. I have lovely stones that I've hardly used this year. Be they ceramic, diamond um stones i've got the veneve stones they're amazing stones i haven't done enough videos on them that will come next year i have beautiful just ceramic stones that jeff jewel i won in one of his competitions and he sent me stones i haven't done enough on it 
this next year is going to be a bit more laid back and let me do the things that I enjoy and hopefully in my enjoyment you'll get something out of it. And again, that's my knife collection. Hopefully in my enjoyment, which at the moment is slip joints. Look, at, for years it was, you know, having to get paramilitaries, having to get the bench maids, having to get... And yes, I still love these knives. This Para 3 is absolutely amazing. My 940 is absolutely amazing. And I know times are moving on. But most of the time I don't need anything else because these are good. The ones on the outline, um, I can trade and get some of the more modern ones that are coming out. But I'm not chasing them anymore because I've got into that steel thing that you need all the different steels. Like, you know, LC200, um, M390, 20CV. Uh, you know, I've got nearly all the steels you can think of except for the maximums, them really hard ones. And thankfully, I got out of that thought process before I had to go into them. Because since, since I moved to traditional slip joints, they're carbon steel, most of these. Basic carbon steel. This one is about a 100-year-old, little bit of carbon steel. Still going strong. And it tells me for everything I want to do. Do you know what I mean? And this is a, I think this was a 30 pound knife. And it does me as a full EDC knife. So I, this year I have learned, I don't need Maximate. Maximate might need me, but I don't need Maximate. Now, will I ever get a Maximate? At the right price, if I get a trade, yes, I probably would. But I'm not chasing steels anymore. It's not important. I found out that a basic carbon steel, C70, which is really low, I can sharpen it quickly and it lasts me a day most of the time. And if it doesn't, I can sharpen it in seconds on a wee stick. And that's it. And all these other knives, I can sharpen quickly on a little strop or a, a little light diamond file that I can take with me if I need to do it. Because that's all you need to do most of the time is just check the edge. Just reprofile that edge. Just bring it back to life again. And for me, that's enough. I don't need all the big steels. Is it nice having them? Yes, so that you can, you know what other people are talking about. And that's, that's about it, because they mean nothing in my life anymore. Um, you know, most of the time, this LCT 100, is it submerged in water all day long? Do I live in a humid place? No. This is a kitchen knife. Bloody expensive kitchen knife. But that's all it's used for. And then I just set it at the side. It dries itself and there's no rust. Brilliant. Brilliant. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, it's, look, it's all right me saying I'm not going to chase after them. I've got most of the ones that I want. Um, but I just want you to know, sometimes if it's tight and you feel as if you're missing out much, you're not really. You're just missing out on the fact that you can say, I've got a 20 CV knife because look here's a real steel in D2 and a 20 CV there you go D2 20 CV I have never blunted either of them <laughs> neither of them I've never I very rarely blunt a slip joint in, in a cheap carbon steel because I don't work that hard with my knives now, if you do work that hard and you want the better steel, yes, by all means, go for it. I'm not saying they're rubbish steels. They're good steels if you need them. But if you're a knife collector, you know, once you get one of them, don't go chasing more and more and more and more. Because unless you're going to keep blunting them, you're just paying a lot of money for something that doesn't cost the companies a lot of money to upgrade a steel. It really doesn't, but they'll charge you stupid prices more to have a knife with that steel on it. There's another lesson I learned this year. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Uh, companies will charge you a fortune to have, except Lion Steel and Viper and those, they're doing the M390 at prices most people can see it for, or do you know what they can, can just go out and buy? I mean, this is about 140 pounds and I know that's dear. Again, listen to that. This is as close to a locking knife as you'll ever get. This is D2 
different. And, and if you've got friends who love your hobby, this is a great knife to show them, let them hold. It is stunning. I cannot see this ever closing on me, no matter what I'm doing. It is so well made and constructed. It's so hard to close, but for anybody that's scared of slip joints. So Lion Steel are doing it. They're giving you M390 at a price of 150. Do you know what I mean? That's great. And that's a great steel. It's easily sharpened. Most steels are easily sharpened. Don't get into this habit of you've got to have this steel, you know, because, you know, I can't take that steel because... Now, maybe Maximit's a bit different. I've never sharpened a Maximit. I can't see it. I think just think you maybe have to go a bit longer. But they're not harder to sharpen. They're just longer to sharpen. And if you can get that into your head, the fear of sharpening goes right out the window. There's nothing harder to sharpen. There's just some steels take longer to sharpen because you do exactly the same thing with diamond stones on the harder steels, with ceramics on the softer. Um, so there we go. Right, I think that's it. I've had a wonderful year. But the one thing that has made my year both enjoyable, worthwhile, and possible to happen. I know this is going to sound corny, but it's my wife. My wife had a stroke just over a year ago, a week, a year and a week ago, she had a stroke. And uh, she survived it with not a lot of problems. She was very, very fortunate. So she has made this possible by just letting me get on with it. And uh, I appreciate that a lot. And a lot of us have wives that are like that, who let us get on with this hobby. Uh, uh, and as long as we're not abusing it. So don't abuse what you've got at home. Don't take food off your table, but enjoy and buy as many knives as you can. As many as you can get away with. Um, that's making a bit of a fun of it, but it's the truth. Just don't abuse it. It's a hobby that can quite easily get addictive. And uh, we've had an awful lot this year of people who have gotten trouble through addictions, be it alcohol, drugs, because of what's been happening in the world this year. And uh, maybe give a thought to them people. Um, give a thought to them people and uh, maybe help them if you can. If you can see somebody you can help, give them a hand. Give them a hand. Help somebody somewhere one day a year if you can. And if you can do more, good on you. So thank you to everybody. My subs, you make this absolutely amazing for me the feedback in the comments, the, you know, and not always agreeable or not always, but you've done it and you, you keep coming back. You might disagree with something I've got. The next time you'll agree. And that's the way this has to work because we don't all agree. So yes, be careful what you're chasing because at the end of the chase, <laughs> sometimes you can have a drawer full of stuff that you'll find it hard to get the money back you put in. In fact, you very rarely get the money back you put in. Um, but just be careful what you're chasing. Let people like me show you what's out there and be more choosy about what you buy. The next knife is not always the best knife. Um, and that's it. I've had a wonderful year. I'm really looking forward to 2021. I'm looking forward to where it's going to take me again because although I've got this pattern set in my head, it probably won't be that. Because it never is. <laughs> a very Merry Christmas. And whatever your celebration is, I don't know all these different ones for different religions, different, you know, colours, different. I don't know what you are celebrating, but I just want you to know that my prayers are for you and I look forward to next year. And just keep buying knives. Take care, everybody. All the best. Paddy's gone.